SPV. Um, I just fitted this Baxi 600 boiler and as it's a new boiler on the market, I thought I'd do a little product review video. Um, Baxi haven't asked me to do it, so it's going to be unbiased. I'll just give you my opinion, what I think is good, what I think is not so good, and just yeah, let you have a little look inside the boiler. Okay, so boiler's on the wall, the job's done, it's all working, I've had a play around with it. This is actually the second 600 I've fitted, so I kind of know my way around the boiler now. So, um, first thing you can tell is the size of it. So it's a cupboard fit boiler. It's all metal. Even the base is metal. We'll go, go into that a bit more later. So, um, the first thing we'll do, just slacken off these two screws. And that's the cover. Got some insulation there for soundproofing. Okay, so this is the boiler. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So we'll have a look at the um, the arrangement underneath. So we've got the flow pipe here with the addition of a drain cock. So if you need to drain the system, isolate these flow and return isolation valves and you can drain the boiler externally from that. Um, that's quite handy, you can get your hose on there. Then we've got the hot water, gas, isolation valve and test points so you can do your gas tests from there. PRV, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then you can see here we've got the cold and the return connected with this. So if you're not familiar with this, this is a new addition to Baxi. This is a keyless filling link. So you literally do that to let the water in. Now, these are good if you are on the phone to your customer, they can't find the filling loop, they don't know how to top the boiler up. You can literally say, get the little green lever, give it a pull, and you can top the system up over the phone. It's good for that. Um, as far as I'm concerned though, when you fill it, first fill in the system and you're on your own, it's not ideal. So on this system, I've fitted my own external filling loop as well as kind of a backup, but also for me when I'm commissioning it. Um, if you're on your own, you've got to jam something in there to hold it while you're running around um, venting the rads. So that's that. Um, we've got two cable entry points there. Um, and then you can see this here. So I don't know if you've noticed on a lot of um, boilers with a metal bottom, if they do leak at any point and water gets in there, this goes all rusty on the inside. This is just a drip point. So there's a channel inside the boiler. You can see here this channel. So the water makes its way into there and will drip out of there. And it runs down, runs down this rubber, and will drip off that. Um, condensed trap at the bottom there. That's pretty much it for the base. Um, we'll talk about the user interface at the end. So, first thing to notice inside here is it's all brass. So you've got brass diverter, hydraulic block beyond the pump there, brass. Grunfoss pump, front facing PRV, um, so no messing around at the back. Standard plate heat exchanger for a back seat, so that'll come out easily if you remove the diverter head. Um, nice big water pressure sensor there, so hopefully they won't have too many problems with those blocking up. Nylon hose connected to the expan expansion vessel. And we've got overheat stat and dry thermist, temperature thermistor. What else can we see? Gas valve, stainless steel heat exchanger. And if we go on to the top, the Schrader valve for pumping up the expansion vessel is accessible from the top of the boiler, which I think is pretty cool. Centralized flue. So no offset flue, that's another bonus. Let's drop back down. So the most important thing when you first turn these boilers on is you'll get on the display zero, zero, zero and the boiler won't work. It won't do anything until you've put it into something which is called purge mode. So ignore the display now, because I've already commissioned this boiler, it's already working. But when you first put it on, you'll have the ze three zeros here. And what you need to do is turn the central heating knob to minimum. 
and then give it two quick quarter turns. It will change to on and then it will display 312 and that is what the boiler calls purge mode. So it's basically cycling through with the diverter valve and the pump and expelling any air that's in the boiler. And it will do this for roughly seven minutes. Once it's done that, then you are free to use the boiler, commission the boiler. So that's purge mode, de -air a de-aeration function basically. When, you fin when it's finished, it will come out itself, but we can just clear it by doing that. So you'll notice I've got no demand on at the minute and we've got these two icons here heating and hot water icons basically telling you it's in winter mode there's no way to to change it between summer and winter um i guess you would just put your thermostat right down to minimum which is 25 degrees if you wanted it to be in a kind of summer mode so we'll set the temperature there to 65 let's say and then the hot water temperature you can set to say 55 and that's how you set your temperatures when you're moving on the temperature is what you're setting it to when you're not touching it the boiler just displays the boiler temperature so the other thing um, you can do is similar to what we've just done for purge mode de-aeration we can set the boiler for high and low for commissioning so if we put the hot water down to minimum And give that two quick quarter turns it's now in commission mode and we can set our high and low output so if you see here when I change the center heat minimum we can go all the way down to zero which is minimum and check your um, combustion analysis at low rate and then all the way up to max rate which will be 100 there that's running at max rate and we can do our combustion analysis on max rate you can also do this if you need to set the gas valve co2 this is how to get into min and max so to come out of that just change the, um, the hot water temperature And that's pretty much it for the user interface. Um, it's pretty straightforward, pretty basic. You can't do um, things you would do, say, on a on a valent. You know, go into the menu and change the kilowatts for your central heating circuit, things like that. But it's um, quite easy to use for what you need to do for your basic checks. So basically when you've got demand on, the um, one of these will flash, so we'll try the hot water now. So I've turned the tap on, calling for heat, the tap neons begin to flash. Now I've put the central heating on and you can see that the radiator has begun to flash and obviously the temperature is now changing because the diverter valve is opened. And then you, when the boiler is fired you get a little flame symbol there. That's pretty much it for the display and the controls. Okay so we've looked inside the boiler now, I'll let you make your, make your own mind up about it. But we'll just quickly run through some of the, the points of the boiler. So it's lightweight, 29 kilograms I think they say, cupboard fit. Rear pipeable without the need of a standoff kit. You can buy a rear pipe kit which is preformed bends. So this is just to show you the rear pipe kit. So this is about my fifth back to 600 now and this is an ideal mini I'm removing. And you can see there it's got like a wall jig standoff kit where the pipes run down behind. So with the back C600 you can order this rear pipe kit and you get the preformed bends and some extra clips and then you can clip your 
preform bends onto the wall plate without an extra jig or anything um, to, to make the border stand off so you still achieve the cupboard fit. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show you that. You can also get, now that we've got um, Boiler Plus legislation come in, Baxi have come up with two um, solutions so you can comply with Boiler Plus. The first one is the IFOS, the in Flu Outdoor Sensor. And that's basically a weather comp sensor that comes, clips on the end of your flu and then runs back through the air intake into the board all the way down to the circuit board. Um, I think they're about 25, 30 quid and that gives the boiler weather comp. Um, so that's one thing. And then they've also got their own smart control called the back CU sense. So that's a smart thermostat with load compensation to comply with the smart controls aspect of boiler plus. Um, not sure on the price of that, but there are two, um, two options to comply with the new legislation of boiler plus. A seven year warranty out of the box and you can't um you can't upgrade that to sort of ten years so they're sticking with seven years on this. Um so yeah that's the uh the new Baxi six hundred range, this is the six thirty. Hope you found this video useful. Um any questions leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer them for you. Thanks for watching.